Today I've got a little oak um, elbow chair, probably a desk chair that um, is in need of the top regluing. Um, we've got a broken spindle here, so that needs repairing. The front of the arms are coming out where the, um, the wedge is underneath, so I'm going to knock it all apart and hopefully we're going to re-glue it. As you can see, I've marked up each spindle just because it all looks really easy and they look the same, but quite often they're not. And when you're sort of like covered in glue, it's just easier to know exactly where they're going. I don't always mark them up, but I thought for the video I would. But anyway, let's go. So we're safe. So that arm there is coming out very easily. That one I had to chop the wedge in this bit. Yeah, that's coming out, so that's no problem. It looks a little bit broken in there, but you never quite know what's going to happen until you start doing this. So, now this is a back to come up. Sometimes you have to be a little bit violent with these things. I think you can tell I haven't done this. I'm trying not to be on the video. Yeah, the back's loose, but. Yep, it's coming out, but you just have to work at it a bit. Oops, my mallet's broken. Well, it's pretty old. I think I've had it for about 25 years, and it was rubber in its perish, so that's the end of that. Um, fortunately, I've got another rubber mallet, because they're quite useful. So. Ooh, that was a bit violent. So, that's all come off. It doesn't normally happen quite like that. But, um, so those can come out as well as there. That's, that's the broken one. So I need to drill that. I try and get every piece out because if you don't and you don't glue them, they're just... Oops, there goes another one. Not normally this violent. It's a little bit difficult trying to video it and work on it. So, but anyway, you can see I've had the desired effect. It's all apart now. Um, these ones look quite. Well, they are loose, so we'll try and get these out. Don't be scared to sort of hit it quite hard. Because, yep, they're all coming out. The more we actually remove, the better, because you want all of them to be glue. And a lot of them are quite loose, aren't they? So that one's coming out quite easily. Unfortunately, I've marked them, so that's not going to be a problem for them back. And these two look a bit, a bit um, stuck in there, so. No, that one's out. I think that one's probably stuck too hard. If you really want to get it out, what you can do is put methylated spirits down between the turning and that will break the glue joint. But to be honest, I think that's good enough. We've got most of them out. And it won't, that back one will come out because you can see it's warping already. So you might as well do that while we're at it. Let's take that off. That's from that side. So that wasn't that hard to get out, was it? So that was worth taking out. Um, I've got one left in. It's always a bit difficult to get these ones out because when you start hitting the top of the cresting rail, you might damage the sort of cut out. Yeah, that's come out quite easy, so there we go. That's weird, it says six on there and I've written five. So we'll just change that. So, we now know that one is there, so they're all marked, so that's going to be quite easy now to put them back together if we can find them, because they're probably on the floor. Uh, so we've got those two middle ones. Right. We don't need to do much gluing up and then cleaning up, because it looks pretty clean already. So, the next thing to do is to repair this little spindle which came out of here. So 
and I'm going to drill a hole into the spindle and into the churn. And to do that, I'm going to use a drill with a little point on it. To try and get the hole angled exactly the way the spindle is angled, because otherwise the spindle is going to not be. be You don't angle it, the spindle will pull in the wrong direction. So I'd normally put this in the vise, but for the video I'll do it in by hand. And like I say, it's a really simple process. I've made sure I've got a drill that's the right size, so I tested it on a piece of pine first, rather than drilling this and trying to drill the wrong size, because that's really frustrating. So I'm just going to drill the right size now, with the dowel. So, don't really want to go through the bottom of the chair, so I do that side quite carefully. But the spindle side, it doesn't really matter how far you got. Sometimes the further you go, the better it is. Just make sure your drill isn't going to break the spindle out because it's too big. So let's see. Put a little bit of dowel here. And that dial is perfect. Can you see that fits really well? So that's the beach dial. So that was a very quick process. So what I've got to do now is I'm using my old animal glue. That's not old, but it's an old technique. And I'll just put a little bit of glue on the dial and push that into the spindle. The most important thing is it's um, not too long to go in there, so when you glue the chair up, it stops the chair gluing, so I just tap it in. Just put it up to the chair so you can see. You can see that's not that's not going in properly. Oh, actually, actually it's perfect, so there we are. So what I'll do now is start gluing in the gluing the dowels back in. Well, the spindles, sorry. So that one's gone back in and that's now been repaired properly, that's a proper repair um, and that will be absolutely fine and give you no problems in the future. The other good thing about having the um, tape with the numbers is you know exactly where it goes but it also knows, makes you remember to put it the right way up because it's quite easy to put spindles back in the wrong way around and then when you glue the chair up and you come to look at it and think oh and you're a bit stuck then when it's but you see, it's a really easy process. Just make sure the turning's in the right place. You do this before you strip the chair, which is quite handy because the polish will show you exactly which way around the turning went. So where's number four? That's an X, so that was at the front. I think somebody's done this in the wrong, the wrong way before, actually. But you can, it's very clear how they go. This um, glue I'm using is an old animal glue and it's hot when you put it on. So you have to work fairly quickly. That's why I'm gonna do all the spindles into the chair and then I'm gonna put my arms on when these are put in. And sometimes it's a bit difficult to get it all, all back on properly, but I suspect it'll be okay today. And I've put two back spindles in. Very simple process, but if you're going to restore a chair, there's absolutely no point restoring it without gluing it up because you can't knock a chair around like I've just done with this one when it's got a re when you just refinished it, you've just damaged what you've just done. So if this and it needs to be done first, but it also needs to be done before you polish it. And the reason for that is that. Um, When you polish it, um, you will knock off quite a lot of the um, the glue, so it well, makes that sort of side a bit much easier. This front leg isn't great, but hopefully it'll be all right. But the um, dowel is quite broken, so I might have to later on drill from the bottom. But we'll see how we go. I'm going to put quite a lot of glue on these and the good thing with the animal glue it sort of sits there it doesn't just run off which makes it much easier when you're putting on you know more, gluing up multiple things 
I'll put a bit of glue in actually into the um, broken wedge. I wouldn't like to repair that, but sometimes you just need to keep moving. So now, I don't know how much you can see on the video, but I've just got to get them all put back in, get the holes lined up, which can get a bit tricky because you've got to get each dowel. Obviously, if one dowel is too high on the other, it's not going to go. There we go. So that's So that arm's on. So it is really not taking very long, but I've been doing that a long time. So and don't worry about too much glue. If you, I mean, if you're not repolishing, too, you have to be a little bit more careful. But as I am repolishing, I'm not worried at all how much glue. The more the better, really. If it squeezes out, you know. Fortunately, the arm on this one, the little turning is fine. So it's only the one that wasn't very good. I put that should go in first, really. And as it squeezes down, you can push the spindles in, give them a little bit of tap down. Right now, we've just got the bags, and because I've done the two arms, um, it, you know, it's just doing the process the right way around to make the job easy. So. I'm going to lay the chair down for a minute just to get the glue onto the back more easily. You could use a PVA, um, but PVA, is ten PVA tends to be very runny. This old animal glue is fantastic for staying in place where you put it. And the other thing is it's reversible, so if the chair gets broken in the future, Somebody will be able to use heat or water or methylated spirits to break the joint and repair it. But if you use epoxy resin on these, that's it. It makes it very difficult in the future. Epoxy resin is a great glue, but there's a time and place for it, and it's not here. So you can see I've got loads of glue, it's running off, but that's really not important. So let's see if we can get the back on easily. I'll start with one end, work our way along. Sometimes it's nice when you've got a friend to help out or somebody to work with. Uh, I used to employ somebody, but now it's a bit tricky. So, you can see I've got to get them all aligned with the holes before any of it will go down, and that takes a bit of working out. Sometimes you work from one end, sometimes you... tapping because the glue is drying a bit. Um, if in any doubt, you can just use a sash clamp just to help you push it a bit further on. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to get a sash clamp just to help me push it down. I don't I probably don't need it to be on there after it's pushed down, but it would just Generally, this will just help. But we'll see. Right. It's a bit of a difficult shape. So I just do it with the hammer in.
Right, I think that's as far as it's going to go. I don't think it went any further last time. I would have liked it to go further. But that will be solid as a rock. We've repaired the um, spindle. That was an easy job. And that's ready to uh, be polished. Um, I will just have a little go with the clamp when I turn the video off, so hopefully it'll go a bit closer. But um, the next video will be stripping and sanding. Thank you.